Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back with another Minute Mechanics tutorial. We're going to be making zip lines just like the ones in games like Apex Legends. Alright, let's jump straight into the video. So starting out in a brand new scene, I've created a few platforms across my scene where I'm going to set up my zip lines. I've also thrown in the free version of the in-vector third-person controller into my scenes so that I can sort of run around and interact with the environment. So if you don't already have a character controller set up in your scene, pause the video here and set that one up. I'll have a link to the asset store location in the description down below. I'm going to just speed through this recording while I create the proxy for the zipline. Essentially, I'm just creating an empty game object, tagging it with the zipline tag, and then creating two cubes as child objects inside there to just create a basic shape that sort of resembles what a zipline might look like. So just making sure that you've created the zipline tag and assigned that tag to the parent of the zipline game object, um, everything should work fine. So with that done, I'm going to quickly create a box collider on the zipline game object, uh, making sure that that one's set to trigger. And I'm just going to set up the size of the collider and make sure that the center point matches the shape of the zipline that we have. So once that's done, we'll just want to make sure that we add a rigid body to this game object as well so that physics can interact with this collider. I'm just going to set the gravity to false and make sure that it's kinesmatic. Now the final step is to create another new empty game object as a child of the zipline game object and I'm going to call that one zip transform and make sure that it's positioned at the tip of our zipline. This is where our ziplines are going to connect, so make sure that you position that where you want it to look good. Now, before we get into the code, I'm just going to make sure that I prefab this zipline game object. And then um, I'm going to create a scripts folder and create two scripts, the zipline script and the player script. Now, jumping into the zipline prefab, I'm just going to drag the zipline script onto that parent game object. And then going back into my scene, I'm going to find my player, which in my case is a third person controller underscore light and drag that player script onto him as well. The final thing I'm going to do before we jump into the code is just create a few more zip lines and scatter them across my scene. So I'm just going to place four, one on each of the platforms and just orient, orient them so that uh, when we connect a cable across each of them, it'll sort of look somewhat natural when the player uh, crosses the zip line. And then the final thing I'll do is just name them appropriate. So I'll name zip line one, two, three, and four um, in order and then just order them in my scene. Then we can go ahead and jump into the code. Before we jump into the code, I'd just like to point out that we've got a Discord community that's incredibly helpful. So if you have any questions that you want answers to, game dev related, we'd be happy to help. A link for that one will be in the description down below. So starting out in our zipline class, the first thing I'll do is create my variables. So I'm going to create a public transform, which we'll call zip transform, um, making sure that we're using capitals on our camel case. And what this variable will represent is that transform point that we allocated at the tip of our zipline. Then I'm going to create two new variables that are serializable. The first will be of type zipline, and we're going to call that one target zip. And that's just going to represent the zipline that we're going to be moving towards if we interact with the zipline on the player. And the second will be a float that we call zip speed. And I'm going to set that one to a default variable of probably five floats. So the next variable I'll create is another serialized float, and this one I'll call arrival threshold. Now this variable will just represent the distance we need to be from the target zip line to stop using the zip. Now I'll just quickly replace my start method with a wake as we're gonna be using that one a little bit later. And then at the bottom of my class, I'm gonna create my two uh, methods that we'll need. The first one will need to be a public method and we'll call that one start zipping. And we're gonna need to pass in a uh, game object, which we'll call player. Then the second method will be a private method and I'll call that one reset zipline. Now back at the top of our class, I'm going to set up a few more variables. These ones will be private, so unserialized. And the first of which I'll call zipping and that's going to be a Boolean, which we're going to set to false. The second one will be a game object, which we're going to call local zip. Now within our start zipline method, um, what we're going to want to do is create a new zipline and then attach the player to it. So to do this, I'm going to set our local zip to game object create primitive and we're going to want to create a primitive type of sphere. Then I'm going to set the local zips transform position to be equal to our zip transform. And I'm also going to want to set up the scale of our local zip. So we'll call transform.local scale and we're going to set that one equivalent to a new vector three. Now I think a scale of 0.2 is appropriate for the sphere. Um, I might actually set this one up as a serialized float so that we can customize the size of our sphere um, within our class. So let's duplicate the zip speed and then rename that one to zip scale and we'll set the default value to 0.2 as well. 
Then let's pass in zip scale into each of the axes of our vector three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a component to my local zip and that one will be of type rigid body. Um, and I'm gonna set the using gravity flag to false straight away. And then I'm also gonna get component from my local zip and that one's gonna be of type collider. Um, and we're gonna set that one to is trigger. Now with all that done, our zip is set up. So the next step is to set up our player and attach that one to the zip line. So the first thing I'll do is uh, call player.getComponent and we'll wanna get the rigid body component and we'll want to turn the gravity off of the rigid body so that when we're attached to the zip line, the player doesn't fall down. I'm gonna duplicate the get component rigid body two more times and then I'll set is kinismatic to true. And then I'm also gonna set the velocity to vector three, zero. This way, if the player is carrying any velocity before jumping on the zip line, that's reset. So I'm going to need to disable use of the character controller temporarily while the player's using the zip line. So in my case, I'm gonna import the in vector character controller um, namespace. And then I'm gonna get the two character controller components and disable them. You might need to do some custom implementation here depending on the character controller you're using for your character, but what we wanna do is disable use of the character controller while he's using the zip line. Then the final thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my player's transform.parent is set to the local zips transform. And that'll just uh, bind the player to the local zip. So any movement the local zip does, the player sort of follows along. Now I'm also gonna make sure that I set my zipping flag to true not transform. Now within our update loop, I'm gonna call local zip dot get component rigid body. And we're just gonna be adding force relative to our local zips transform and the target zips uh, transform. So we need to get that normalized vector. So what I'll do is get the target zip um, zip transform dot position and we'll wanna minus r zip transform dot position. And that'll give us a vector that's facing uh, from the, the zip line we're using towards the zip line we want to go to. And then we'll multiply this out by our zip speed. And then of course, multiply it by time dot delta time. I'll pass in the force mode acceleration um, as a second parameter to this method. And then at the end of our update loop, we're gonna check if the distance between our current zip line's position and the target zip line's position is less than our arrival threshold, then we'll reset the zip line. Make sure that we do target zip dot zip transform dot position, otherwise this won't work. And then within this conditional, we'll just call the reset zip line method. Now within our reset zip line method, I'm just gonna copy out all of the code I'd done before in my start zip line regarding the player um, as a starting point. And then I'll say game object player is equivalent to local zip dot transform dot get child and we'll pass in zero because we're gonna be grabbing the only child that the zip line has. Then we want to make sure that we're setting all of our uh, rigid bodies parameters. So we're going to set our use gravity to true, is kinismatic to false, velocity equals vector three zero, and then we'll just enable our character controllers again. And finally, I'm just going to set my player's transform dot parent to be equal to null. Then I'm going to want to call the destroy method, passing in the local zip game object. And then finally, I'll set local zip to be equal to null as well. And then the last thing to do is set our zipping flag to be equal to false. I've also gone ahead and added a debug.log here just for testing purposes. Now, one thing that we will need to do here is add some guard clauses. So we're gonna check that um, if we're not zipping, we're just gonna return out of this reset zip line. Then if we are zipping, we're gonna return out of this start zip line method. And finally, if we are not zipping or if the local zip game object is equivalent to null, we're gonna return out of this update loop. So now with our zipline implemented, the final thing to do is implement the player logic. So the only thing we're gonna be doing here is doing a sphere cast and then checking if we've got a zipline within our sphere and calling that start zipping method. So we'll go ahead and create two serialized floats. One will be called check offset with a default value of one float and the other will be check radius with a default value of two floats. Now within the update loop, I'm gonna check for input.getKeyDown and we're gonna pass in key code dot E. So when the player presses the E key, we're gonna start zip lining. Um, this is really customizable. Um, you can add whatever functionality you want for your own input system, but this will work for us. Uh, now we're gonna create a 
an array of raycast hits, and I'm going to call that variable hits, and we'll set it equivalent to physics.sphericast all. We'll want to pass in transform position plus the check offset. So we'll set that one up as a new vector three, passing in zero for the X, check offset for the Y, and zero for the Z. We'll then need to pass in check radius as the second parameter in this method. And then the final parameter here is just vector three up. Now we're going to want to loop through all of our hits that we just made within our sphere cast. So we'll do for each ray cast hit, uh, we'll call that hit in hits. And then we'll check using an if statement on the individual hit whether or not the collider dot uh, game object dot tag is equivalent to our zipline tag that we made prior. And if it is, we know that that uh, game object has the zipline uh, component on it. So let's do hit dot collider dot get component zipline and we'll start the zipping method. And for the only parameter, I'm just going to pass in game object, which will just take this game object of the player and pass it into the start zipline method. And I think with that done, we've got everything implemented. So let's go back into the Unity scene. Now, the first thing I'll do here is go to my zipline prefab, and I'm going to attach the zip transform to the zip transform variable that we just created in the zipline script. Then within my scene, I'm just going to make sure that I attach all of my zip lines to their target zips. So zip line one will be target two, zip line two will be three, and so forth, so on. Um, so on, so forth. <laughs> now I did a bit of testing, and one thing that I realized is the zip speed was too low. So I'm just going to set that one up as 500 within the prefab. And then when we hit play and we start testing, we should see that our player connects to a little circle and starts zipping from one point to the other. So we've sort of got everything working. There's a little bit of polish work we can do, like setting up animations that he's holding onto the zip line, creating some models and all that stuff. But one last thing I wanted to do before this tutorial is over is add some zip line cables just to sort of polish it up that much more. So let's go ahead and do that now. So within my zip line prefab, I'm gonna to go to the zip transform and add a line renderer component. I'm gonna set the width to 0.2. I've done a little bit of testing and I think that looks the best. Um, and then I'm going to go into my color and I'm going to change that one to be a dark brown initially and a little bit of a lighter brown at the end. So back within the zipline class, I'm just going to duplicate this arrival threshold and we'll want to set up the variable type as a line renderer. Um, and I'm going to call this one cable and set it to nothing for now. Um, and then within our awake method that we set up earlier, I'm going to set cable dot set position and we'll pass in for the parameters zero, which is index zero, so position position one, essentially. Um, and we'll wanna pass in the zip transform dot position. Um, so that's the first position. And then the second position, index one, will be target zip dot zip transform dot position. So that's all the code we need here. Um, so let's jump back into Unity and set this one up. Now, when we hit play, to avoid having these pink lines, I'm gonna go back to my prefab in my zip transform, and I'm gonna to have to set the material we're gonna to wanna to set this material to our default line material. That'll just fix that um, so that we don't have that pink. And also I'm just gonna set the texture mode to tile. Now when we hit play again, we should see that we've got our, our little zip line lines connected to each of the zip lines. So it's a little bit more clear what happens when we, when we press E on it. And yeah, we've got everything sort of working now. There's a lot of polish work you can do on this and really sort of clean it up and, and uh, amend it for your use case specifically, but I think what we've created here is a really good starting point uh, for sort of implementing a zipline that's similar to the ones that you see in Apex Legends and a bunch of other sort of games. Thanks for following along till the end of the tutorial. If you have any feedback or want to join the discussion, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button as it goes a long way. Thanks for watching and have a great day.